I feel like this video should start with a spiel that ends with my name is Lizzie, not Bennett, and today we're discussing the Lizzie Bennett Diaries. <laughs> That's right, today I thought I would discuss a web series that has turned 10 years old this year, the Lizzie Bennett Diaries, which is a modern day adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. This is very much inspired by and in response to kind of Ashley Clement's look back diaries. So Ashley Clement's played Lizzie Bennett on the show and she is doing a sort of real time watch back, look back with other members of the cast and creatives on the Lizzie Bennett diaries. And they're discussing each episode, a bit of behind the scenes, discussing the process of creating and adapting the story for the series. For those of you unfamiliar with the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, first of all, just go watch them. It's great, it's eight hours and you'll be done. Go and do it. Um, it is a web series based on Pride and Prejudice, modern day, and Lizzie Bennet is a grad student who has a video blog and she vlogs the lives of her and her sisters and the people they come across and tells the story of Pride and Prejudice through the medium of vlog. In many ways, even though it is a modern day adaptation, it is the closest adaptation in that it keeps pretty much every beat of the story. There are very few things that fundamentally change rather than get tweaked for a modern audience. And today I thought we would discuss the series, uh, the adaptation process, its success, why it's successful, and its legacy. Now would be the perfect time, I should have gone now. My name is Lizzie, not Bennett, and we're discussing the Lizzie Bennett Diaries. Na 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 yeah! Okay, so the Lizzie Bennett Diaries, brainchild of Hank Green, began in 2012, I believe sort of spring of 2012, and was a year-long web series with two episodes a week, usually less than five minutes long, that told in real time the story of Pride and Prejudice with modern characters. The main character is, of course, Lizzie Bennett. It is her video diary. We hear the story through her eyes. We hear her perspective on the stories. She has her two sisters, Jane and Lydia. Kitty and Mary have other roles. And her best friend, Charlotte, who helps her with the video blogs. Those are the four kind of main players at the start and very much the main characters throughout. At the start, all of the other characters are described and recreated by those four main characters. So rather than have a whole host of cast who come in and things happen on camera, most of the action happens off camera and is then recreated by Lizzie and her family and friends to show us what happened, which is genius, it's genius. As I said, most of the story remains intact. You have the three sisters who actually have plot points in Pride and Prejudice. The other two, I did see at the time, I think Hank Green or Bernie Sue, one of the creators of the show, talking about how the financial need to marry off your daughters no longer exists. So the raised stakes of having a family of five isn't as significant in this version. So we have the three sisters, then, you know, rich people come to town, Jane starts dating one of them, Lizzie hates another one, they leave town for various reasons, including the embarrassing Bennett family, Mr Wickham comes to town in the form of George Wickham, the swim coach, Mr Collins arrives, he is looking for a business partner rather than a wife in this version, and he first proposes, gives Lizzie a business proposal, she turns it down. He offers it to Charlotte, who takes it because she's in more financial need of that, which is a genius, genius uh, switch from the original book. Lizzie goes to visit Charlotte. She sees Mr. Darcy. Mr. Darcy confesses her love. She says, I hate you. you get the picture. All of the main beats of the story are there. It is at this point, as Ashley Clements has been saying in the Lizzie Bennet diaries, that they do start to deviate a little bit more from the story of Pride and Prejudice, just by necessity of the format that they are taking and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later uh, but very much the same kind of main events happen 
Lydia gets in trouble with Mr Wickham, Mr Darcy saves Lydia and the family from Mr Wickham, Lizzie realises that she her feelings have changed, she confesses her love, he confesses his love, hooray, it's the end. What always strikes me whenever I watch these back is how much the Lizzie Bennet Diaries is a perfect product of its time, of that tiny little snapshot. I often talk about 2012 Tumblr as a kind of, you know, catch all for the fandom days of my youth and also the way that fandom worked on the internet for those few years between live journal and whatever, know, TikTok, whatever kids run out, I don't know. While the Lizzie Bennet Diaries existed on YouTube and the characters had social media profiles, but the main story was very much YouTube focused. It was a part of that YouTube Tumblr fandom culture at that exact moment in time, which I think is one of the big reasons for its success. It was exactly what people were looking for at the time, exactly the way that people wanted to consume stories and content as we now call it. <laughs> 2012 was the vlogger's heyday and so this low budget little indie production was exactly what people wanted. A sense of authenticity in terms of the passion and love for the project which is a little bit rough around the edges but that's what we all wanted, that's what we loved. The fandom creations at the time were all in that sort of vein. There were fan videos, gift sets, cosplays, it all fits into that, into that culture so so well. I think a perhaps surprising comparison would be Starkid which I guess isn't that surprising of a comparison given how much crossover there has been with the actors between the two groups and how many things they've gone on to do together and crossing over and all that sort of thing. Starkid do parody musicals. It was kicked off with the Harry Potter musical and they've parodied all sorts of things since then and I think a big reason for its success is Yes, they make fun of the things they're parodying, but you can tell it comes from a place of great love and endearment for the thing that they are parodying. And Lizzie Bennet Diaries has a similar thing. You can tell that the creators love the story, that they are desperate to do it justice and to capture as much of it as they can. And that really comes across in the storytelling and in the acting and every, just every aspect of it. It's genius. Ashley Clements has mentioned many times in Lizzie Bennet Diaries about how strange it was to be filming a show in someone's bedroom with just a tiny little camera, but that's what was popular in 2012, was watching, you know, people who just sat in their bedrooms with a camera, like I am right now, filming themselves. That was, they got tens of millions of views as how it was. And so it hit that moment at the exact right time. The thing that I specifically wanted to talk about though, which is kind of what persuaded me to sort of make this video as opposed to just sort of, I don't know, tweeting it, is I was thinking about how so many tiny aspects of Pride and Prejudice were put into this story, into this series, and they perhaps almost shouldn't have been, if that makes sense. So the amount of times on the Look Back Diaries that they've gone, I can't believe we shoehorned this in. I can't believe we made a whole episode about this one line in this one chapter. And first of all, I think, as I was just saying, that's what makes it great. This is, you know, it's a, it's the sort of cross between professional TV and fan fiction. And so, you know, people love the attention to detail and the love for the source material that you show when you have that. And let's be honest, they do stretch the realms of believability quite a lot in the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. Um, the one that springs to mind is the turn about the room. So in the book, of course, uh, Lizzie and Caroline take a turn about the room. They just go walking around a room because that's what you do in 1813 when you have nothing better to do. Nowadays, that would be very weird to do. And this did get retconned in the subsequent book um, that uh, Caroline's Fitbit was telling her to get some steps in, which again, genius. Um, and in the show, it was kind of de very much shoehorned in, like even Lizzie in the show acknowledges that that was a weird thing to do. 
or the convoluted, overly complicated ways that they managed to get Lizzie and Jane to stay at Netherfield. Again, lots of lots of shoehorning in, lots of things twisted to kind of kind of make it work, and they just about just about pulled it off. But that's what we loved about the show. I remember we would watch it and think, oh, that's really clever how they got that tiny little thing in and they clearly tried really hard and they just about managed to make it work. It was a lovely, endearing quality of the show that they managed to cram in so many details of Pride and Prejudice. This was an age where lengthy Tumblr posts and even lengthier fan fictions would be written to explain away the tiniest inconsistency in a favourite TV show or film. So the fact that they worked so hard to make it work is exactly what we were looking for. It's exactly what 2012 Tumblr kids were looking for and we found it. All of the major story points that had a sort of significant change, such as Mr. Collins' marriage proposal becoming a business proposal, were so genius and so brilliant that we didn't mind the fact that all these little things were kind of being shoehorned in. And you could make it make sense in the world, of course you could. So it was part of the fun of it. And also part of knowing that it's a small production, that it's just a handful of people working on this. It's not a massive TV show with loads of resources that has to cater to a massive audience. It feels much more intimate as a show if you can feel like the writers are putting in all of these details just for you. And to an extent, they were. So where we're at at the moment in terms of look back diaries, 10 years on, where we've got to, Mr. Darcy has just confessed his love to Lizzie, who has very much rejected him. He has written a letter. She knows what is in the letter, but we do not. As Ashley Clements was saying in her videos, this is the first major departure from the book that leaves even those of us who knew the story of Pride and Prejudice really well completely in the dark. And especially given that all of the details in the book that we know, not all of them would be relevant today. The whole idea of Mr Wickham trying to elope with a 14 year old girl for her money would be much, much darker than the Lizzie Bennet Diaries would ever go if that were to be the storyline in modern day. So we knew it was going to be different, we knew it would be changed, and that departure made perfect sense for the characters. They've just spent eight months building up these characters and sticking to every single beat of the book. So when it does depart, it's even more impactful, and we know that it's for really good reason. The same with using Caroline more, with kind of using Caroline as a sort of substitute for Anne and Catherine de Bourgh for any sort of on-screen moments where they're needed, we already have got to know Caroline. We love Caroline as a sort of kind of frenemy antagonist. And also Caroline is just really fun to see the different directions the different adaptations take her in. Lost in Austin, for example, takes a whole other view of Caroline, which is brilliant and deserves a whole other video. Maybe I'll talk about Lost in Austin next, because again, that was great but like, it had its moments, but it was great. From this point on, so just after the first proposal as it was, we know there's gonna be more departures from the source material, but they make perfect sense because these characters have taken on a life of their own. They are Jane Austen's characters, but embellished or just kind of tweaked for the modern day. Of course, their priorities are going to be different. The way that they react to situations is going to be different. And the way the Lizzie Bennet Diaries does that is genius. Lizzie and Lydia, for example, are much closer in the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, even at the start, than they ever were in Pride and Prejudice. And regardless of the change in the Lydia Wickham storyline, Lizzie is of course going to be sympathetic because she's much closer to her sister and there's a much more modern understanding of a young woman's role in a situation where they've been taken advantage of, even for the feminist, forward-looking Regency Elizabeth Bennet. She has her blind spots, of course she does. And of course a modern day version would be slightly different because 200 years has passed. And ultimately, 
getting the guy falling in love and marrying Rich isn't the goal in the Lizzie Bennet diaries. We have those satisfying character arcs from every single character because that's what we look for in media nowadays. And the end goal is different. We still have that romance, but ultimately it's about the individual character journeys, which I think is the reason Pride and Prejudice has lasted so long in our popular imaginations that yes it's a romance yes it's about the love story but it's much more about those two individual characters at the core of it and their own character journeys and that goes for basically every Jane Austen novel that it's much more about the character journey than the end goal and I think that's why they've lasted this long. So what is the legacy of the Lizzie Bennet diaries? Well there was a very immediate ripple effect of everyone and anyone making vlog versions of public domain literature, some of which were better than others. <laughs> it's not surprising, as I said, this was the era of the everyone creating things and playing with the sa sandbox of their favourite characters, of ultimately optimism with a fair amount of cynicism mostly aimed at Stephen Moffat on Tumblr. So of course everyone from small content creation companies to groups of teenagers who went to drama school together, they were all making these web series and it was, it was fun to see. It was fun to see all the different uh, approaches that different people took. Some of them were very successful. Carmilla is the one that springs to mind for having three seasons and a movie, which is wild for a web series. Um, most of them had a few episodes filmed on someone's phone in the garage and that's fine. It's it's fun, it enabled all that creativity. There were some more Jane Austen adaptations from the same people. It was very much captured those just those few years where internet fandom was in that one particular place that Probably, I don't know, a combination of things, um, Dashcon, all of 2016, all that sort of thing, just like, you know, the mood changed, the mood changed. As it is now, the Lizzie Bennet Diaries is often mentioned on the list of significant Pride and Prejudice adaptations, and it's definitely earned its place in the hearts of Jane Austen fans as one of the greatest adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. And it's also the most accessible one for so many people, some of my friends and family included. This is how they got into Jane Austen. This is how they discovered Pride and Prejudice and these characters and this story. And that's incredible and is a testament to creativity of public domain adaptations. They can't all be winners, but they can't all be losers either. We probably won't see something exactly like the Lizzie Bennet Diaries again. It hit that moment at exactly the right time and just encapsulated the internet culture of that time. But I think it was one of the things that legitimised internet culture, fandom culture and online media as being as important and as profitable as traditional media. Maybe not as profitable. And it's very, very impressive that such a tiny budget little web series that had four actors at the start is one of the most beloved web series and Pride and Prejudice adaptations out there. If you have watched the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear them. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and I will see you next time. Ta-ra for now.